Meeting will please come to order. Uh, this is a duly advertised meeting of the Joliet Zoning Board of Appeals. In our capacity, we hear petitions for relief from the strict provisions of the city ordinance. In matters of this type, the decision of the board is final. We respect that it does not go to the mayor or the city council for any further action. If you disagree with our decision, you do have recourse in a court of record. We also hear petitions for variations of land use. In matters of this type, we act as an advisory committee to the mayor and city council, making a recommendation either for or against it. The final decision on land use is made by the mayor and the city council. Secretary, please call the roll. Ms. Darling? Here. Mr. Ferguson? Here. Mr. Graham? Here. Ms. Nevarez? Ms. Powers? Mr. Riggs? Here. Mr. Hennessy? Here. Do we have any requests to digress from the agenda? No changes in the agenda as published. Okay. Constance Doggett here? Yes. Let's hear petition 2015-01. Petition number 2015-01. In 2015-02, the applicant is Constant Doggett. The owner of the property is Sharp Property Solutions, location 2785 Black Road. Uh, this Doggett's request is for a variation of use to allow a resale boutique in an existing commercial strip center, which is a B3 general business use in a B1 neighborhood business district, and a special use permit to allow a resale boutique in an existing commercial strip center. The petitioner is requesting a variation of use and a special use permit to allow operation of a resale boutique in a small storefront space. The site is part of a one-story L-shaped commercial strip center located at 2785 Black Road. The property is located at the northeast corner of Black Road and 129th Infantry Drive, uh, which is just north of the Glenwood Manor subdivision. The, uh, that storefront space is currently vacant. Under site-specific information, the site consists of a 25,000-plus square foot brick commercial building built on a slab in, two in 2004. The lot size is approximately 3.3 acres. The site is zoned B1, Neighborhood Business District Zoning. Surrounding zoning land use and character. Uh, the surrounding land use and zoning includes professional office and undeveloped uh, property, which is zone B1, and again, that's the um, neighborhood business district zoning. To the north, single-family residential, zoned R2, single-family residential. To the south, and commercial slash office, also zoned B1 to the east and west. Applicable regulations are as noted. Uh, there were no comments regarding this particular request at the Community Design Review Board, which met uh, on February 5th. Under general discussion, the petitioner plans to leave, I'm sorry, to locate her for-profit resale boutique in the Campus Courtyard Shopping Plaza to gain increased visibility for her business. Historically, the petitioner's business has been focused on internet sales of specific items. The petitioner's resale boutique will include a sale on consignment option. The resale boutique is approximately 600 square feet. The relatively small retail area is the result of a division of larger space. A certain amount of sales will be via the petitioner's website, which is under development. The petitioner has an off-site storage space which will provide adequate storage for items which will eventually be sold at this site. The boutique will sell new and used items including clothing, small furniture, lamps, linens, and shoes. Specialty lotion will also be sold at the premises. The business will open typically from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Tuesday through Sunday. Both a variation of use and a special use permit are required to accommodate the boutique in the B1 business district zoning at this location. Adequate off-street parking to serve the resale shop is available on site. Should the zoning board desire to approve the special use permit, the following conditions are recommended. Uh, the first condition is the 180-day requirement um, that a uh, building permit or certificate of occupancy be obtained not later than 180 days of the effective date of approval. 
The second condition uh, is, should the property be declared a public nuisance, it shall be subject to a rehearing and possible revocation of the variation of use and the special use permit. And finally, uh, that the business conforms to all applicable building code and business license requirements now and into the future. And that concludes the staff report, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Do you swear the evidence you're about to present is the truth, ma'am? I do. May I have your name and address? Constance Doggett, 2708 Discovery Drive, Plainfield, Illinois. Any comments you'd like to make? Um, not at this time. Okay. Any questions or comments from the board? Anybody in the audience wishing to speak in favor of this petition? Anyone opposed? If you have no further comments, the chair closes petition. Ask the board for discussion and a vote. I'll move for approval, Mr. Chairman. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the petition. Call the roll, please. Mr. Ferguson? Aye. Mr. Graham? Aye. Mr. Riggs? Aye. Ms. Darley? Aye. Mr. Hennessy? Aye. Okay, do you want to read the second petition or can we just vote on it? On the special use? Um. <clears throat> we had a variation of use and then we got a special use right. permit. They're separate items. Yeah, you, you'll need to take a, uh, a second vote on that. Okay, we don't need discussion or anything? No. Okay. A motion would be in favor to approve the special use permit for petition 2015-02. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the petition. Call the roll. Mr. Graham? Aye. Mr. Riggs? Aye. Ms. Darley? Aye. Mr. Ferguson? Aye. Mr. Hennessy? Aye. Nice job. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. SBA Towers. Joliet Columbian Club. <clears throat> Anyone here? Come on forward. You with SBA? Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Um, I represent oh. both. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, okay, do you sorry. swear the evidence you're about to present is the truth? I do. Name and address. My name's Eric Lennington. Um, I work for 1080 Realty Services. We're out of Chicago. Uh, we represent both SBA Communications and Verizon Wireless. Okay. Any comments you'd like to make? Sure. Are you, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll, I'll need to read the staff report. Oops. Let's read the petition first. Okay. <laughs> uh, petition number 2015-03, uh, uh, the applicant is SBA Towers. Uh, the owner of the property is Joliet Columbian Club, location 100 South 129th Infantry Drive. Uh, their request is for a special use permit. The petitioner is requesting a special use permit in order to install a 120-foot high cell tower monopole and antenna at the subject location for Veri Verizon Wireless Communication and other future users. The 2.5-acre uh, site currently comprises, is comprised of a one-story brick Knights of Columbus building and their associated parking lot. Uh, the existing zoning is B3, and that's general business district zoning. Surrounding zoning land use and character. To the north uh, is commercial uh, with the B3 zoning. To the south is residential, uh, also with B3 zoning. To the east is commercial and residential with B3 zoning. To the west is park district and uh, military affairs, uh, and that has R2, uh, and that's uh, residential zoning. Applicable regulations are as noted. Um, there were no uh, comments regarding this particular request at the February 5th Community Design Review Board meeting. Under general discussion, Verizon Wireless has concluded that they need a site for their telecommunications service in the area of Jefferson Street and 129th Infantry Drive. SBA Communications Corporation, which is the parent company of the applicant, has been engaged by Verizon Wireless to construct, own, and operate the infrastructure upon which they desire to locate their equipment in this area. As a result, SBA has found this site and is, and is proposing the 120-foot tall monopole that is the subject of this application. The facility will consist of Verizon wireless antennas and other uh, tower-mounted equipment to be mounted at a height of 115 feet. Associated coaxial cable runs down the inside of the tower to an equipment shelter at the tower's base, all within a 
foot by 75 foot fence compound area and I believe that was uh, in your uh, packet there will be ample space on the tower and inside the fenced area for future users the compound will be fenced with board on board fencing and landscaping will be installed around the exterior of the fence access to the tower site will come off of the existing paved driveway and will be paved with asphalt material according to the petitioner uh, Verizon wireless radio frequency engineers have determined a need in the area for their network in order to increase network capacity, improve capacity for daily commuters in local businesses and residences, and to improve reliable in-building coverage for the area. The petitioner conducted a survey of existing towers near this area, but it was determined that there weren't any available to install antennas on in order to achieve their service goals. The monopole installation and antenna system are required to operate in accordance with FAA and FCC regulations and should not impact or interfere with other electronic devices such as radios, televisions, emergency antenna, or other devices that rely on similar technology. Uh, the installation of the new tower and equipment will not have an impact on the health and safety of surrounding residents or businesses. Uh, the planning staff believes that there are opportunities to locate the proposed monopole within the adjacent Joliet Park District uh, property, and, and uh, that is to immediately to the uh, west of the subject site. Um, uh, planning staff believes that although it may be necessary to inc increase the wireless capacity in this area, um, it is unnecessary to further clutter the skyline of Jefferson Street and 129th Infantry Drive uh, with um, additional clutter. Um, staff previously informed the petitioner of this objective. At the time of the staff report, uh, the, uh, the petitioner claimed that they were unable to, um, I think, come to any um, uh, uh, deal uh, with the park district. Um, if the board is inclined to approve the requested special use permit, the following condition would be included, and that is that the applicant must post a bond in the amount of $30,000 uh, prior to the issuance of the building permit for the proposed work. The bond will be utilized for removal of the tower, antenna, and equipment uh, with the applicant in the event of future abandonment. And that concludes the staff report, Mr. Chairman. Oh, you sworn in. Uh, I'm sworn in. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Kendall. <laughs> Where exactly on that property is the tower going to be? In the northeast corner. So the the slide that we had the arrow, so we can see it's it? actually, okay, so there's, I mean, the property is outlined. Yeah. We got it here, but it's pretty yes. small. I can't see it. Okay, so. Uh, you, you, you see the Knights of Columbus building. Yeah. You follow the, the new driveway back. And, the, and that's that dark shaded area. And then the dark shaded area in front of the compound is like the turnaround for the techs when they come out, so for parking. And then you enter the compound. Uh, the big box uh, in the heavy outline would be Verizon Wireless's equipment shelter. And the tower's in the center of that compound. How long of a lease is that going to be? That's a 50 plus year lease. It's long term. Northeast corner, so that would butt up against. Um, it, it, yeah, it butts up against the storage units, and then uh, to the east is the doctor's office. So that that box there, it's actually, you know, probably a hundred feet or more to the east. And how did you come to uh, pick this location? All right, that's an excellent question. Um, so in. April of 2014, I, I received the project from Verizon. I guess maybe I should back up. The, the project comes from Verizon Wireless. It's, it's, it's yeah, we're their familiar site. with it. We grant these all the time. I'm okay. just curious about why this Okay, why I picked this location. spot. Yeah. Um, so the search area is 129th and Jefferson Street, you know, 129th Infantry Drive and, and Jefferson Street. Um, Co-location is my number one objective. I want to, and Verizon Wireless wants to co-locate if and when they can. I think. You don't have to look any farther than the fact that they've recently sold over 12,000 of their own towers to American Tower to a tower company. They have roundly concluded that owning their own tower infrastructure is not what they want to do. You know, they're in the, they're in the, 
telephone service business, I guess, more or less. Um, so that's how this becomes an SBA site once it's, once it's you know, determined that co-location isn't available. I looked at two sites uh, that were existing that I thought uh, potentially Verizon could use. There's an American Tower monopole uh, in the northeast uh, section of that search area. Uh, the monopole is, f is generally what you would conclude is fully loaded. It's got four tenants on it. There's no ground space there for Verizon to, to locate equipment. So that tower is generally maxed out, I think. Um, at least as far as Verizon Wireless would be concerned. Uh, the, second, the second structure I looked at was the Park Tower rooftop. Uh, I thought that was potentially a uh, location for Verizon. Uh, they reviewed that. There were some issues. Uh, uh, the height of, of that building uh, was actually too tall for them to utilize, and there were some uh, facts that I, or uh, issues that I identified when I, when I visited that property that I thought might limit their ability to use it. So those, that, that was eliminated. Um, I, sc I basically scour the area and I'm looking for two things. I'm looking for a property owner that's willing to lease space and a property owner that has enough space to fit a tower compound. You know, basically those are the two criteria that I'm looking for. Um, once, I, once, I, once, I, once I've visited the area and, and done that, I, I come up with two properties. I come up with the Knights of Columbus they have over two acres there. Uh, I, I've had a couple of conversations with them initially in that month of April, and they show interest in the site. Uh, the other property I identify is the park district uh, to the west. Uh, I, I noticed that there's some stadium light poles and some ball fields to the south that, that maybe I could uh, locate a tower in there. Um, Would that location here's the problem be with that affable to you for Here's the problem with that location. You've got, you've got the Joliet Airport, you know, to the west of there further. Um, I talked to the airport. They indicate that they would like to see the tower stay east of Infantry Drive. Uh, in conjunction with that, SBA runs an obstruction evaluation report. Uh, that report shows um, areas to avoid in my search area. Uh, the Park District property, for the most, the majority of it falls in an area that's going to have a limited height that gets approved by the FAA. And so I, I, I have to consider that. Any tower that goes in there is likely going to be lit or marked in some fashion, um, or at least potentially could be. Uh, so that's obviously an issue. I know the city doesn't want to see a light blinking out there. Um, and then the last thing is, is I, the, the weeks of April 14th and April 21st, I make two calls each week to the park district and they don't get returned. So in my business, that's tantamount to a no, you know, of no interest. Uh, I've, I talked to, you know, and in my conversations with the airport, you know, I just kind of infer that the airport talked with whoever they needed to talk to and it was just a no. That, that left one property, the Knights of Columbus. Uh, it had the appropriate zoning. I, I called staff early on in the process to identify what the processes would be or the procedures or the rules or the regulations. Um, obviously, I find out that there's no separate wireless zoning ordinance that deals with towers or antennas here in, in the city. Um, but, but the other rules uh, that I'm given at that time, I, I, you know, I think we can comply with. And so we decided to move forward. Did you ever get in touch with the uh, Park District people? I've no, uh, no, I never heard back from them. Okay. The only person I talked to was you know, the airport administrator. And uh, on the lease, uh, what, do you make a one-time one payment? Or is that an annual lease? or? Um, the, the financial details of the lease are set up where we have an option in place. Uh, we pay an option fee to the Knights of Columbus, and then once we get through this and the rest of the due diligence that kind of goes on behind the scenes. Yeah, one of the concerns I have, uh, depending on the vote here, would be on the future use of that if the KCs at some future time wanted to develop that land for to build a building. I know they used to have their carnivals there and everything. If they ever uh, decided that they needed that space back, and you've got, what, a 50-year lease? Yeah, I mean, it's long-term, right? Uh, well, we can question that. If there's somebody here from the KCs. Yeah, there is. Yeah. Would somebody come forward here, please? This is where the evidence you're about to present is the truth, sir? Yes, sir. Name and address. Bill Jenkins, 313 Westridge Road, Joliet. Yeah, to, in reference to the question I raised, uh, if you have some future use for that property, was that going to be a problem? Um, honestly, sir, the way that we're looking at um, 
the question that you're asking is we're taking everything on a year by year, day by day basis, much like many of the other non for profits in town. Um, this is an outstanding opportunity for us to have a 55 year annuity for my kids, my grandkids, and to I be can able see to use that. that. I agree with you there. Yeah. Um, so, no, we, our board, um, I'm actually the president of the Juliet Columbian Club. Um, we spoke uh, at length about this. Um, the one thing that we did want to do, if you look at the location, was to still allow enough field for the kids to still be able to come and play ball, uh, to have flag football out there, to do all those other things so that that end would still be there. So uh, they took the space for us from 100 by 100 down to 75 by 75, and uh, we tried to do um, the least impact on what we had there. Um, in the past, we had, uh, several years ago, we had looked at the possibility of selling that property, and there were things like retention ponds that were gonna have to go in, and we were gonna lose a large portion of the property. So. Um, we voted that down, we stayed where we were at, and again, we look at this as a win-win. Uh, we get to have our property still where we have the regular functions and we have uh, an annuity that runs on a month-by-month -month basis uh, for 55 years. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Does the uh, board have any questions? Any comments? Any further comments you'd like to make, sir? Um, yeah, I don't, uh, I guess, I guess the, the one thing I would like to point out is, um, Verizon Wireless's ideal height at this location is 140, 145 feet. That's what we originally designed the site for. Uh, that was the, si that was the size of the tower that we were moving forward on up until December of 2014 when I, uh, made my appointment to have the pre-application uh, conversations with staff. Um, when I had that conversation with Mr. Jackson, um, he had indicated that he would like to see the tower dropped in height to 120 feet. Asked if I would take that back to Verizon and see if they would be willing to make that concession. Um, they did, they did, they obviously did because that's what we're applying for. So Verizon's, basically the minimum height they need is 115 feet for the site to work in the appropriate way that they need it to work. How large of an area is this going to cover for reception? I think if you look at the RF maps, um, you know, we've provided. Okay, so this one right here is what we would call the existing coverage. So you have, you know, yellow is the least reliable or the least desirable, you know, if you're a Verizon customer out in this area. So there is some yellow out there. The green is in vehicle. But without too much detail, what I'm trying to get at is. So if uh, you go to the next one, that's about how much it's going to, I mean, it's going to. This is a weak spot for you, right? It's there, a weak so. spot, right? And it's, um, you know, there's a lot of activity out there, you know, a lot of businesses, a lot of traffic, obviously 52 uh, is, is as busy as a street in all of Joliet, uh, you know, and with all the businesses coming in. They need to be where the users are. It's, so mm. that's the point, is they're, they're covering that strip of 52. I mean, that, that there is, I don't know, probably a, you know, a mile and a half wide or two miles so wide. That'll tie in your network. And that ties right in. So those other blue areas are the, net, you know, the existing coverages from the network. To the north of there, you see one. I think that's a site that's actually going on air uh, up in Crest Hill, I believe, is, okay. is that area. Thank you. So. Any other questions from the board? Is there anyone in the audience wishing to speak in favor of this petition? You've been sworn in, come on forward. Uh, thank you, I'll be brief. Um, really what I wanted to just present to the board was um, the Knights of Columbus has been a part of Joliet for 100 plus years. Um, our main purpose in Joliet is to raise funds to give back to children with intellectual disabilities. Um, we do that through uh, fish fries, fundraisers, Tootsie Roll drives, and it's all through volunteer efforts. Um, we also provide to the community banquet facilities. Um, so I guess I, I hope that we're viewed as, as good citizens as, as you make your uh, review. The other thing I would say is when we looked at the site, uh, we tried to put that site where it would least impact our neighbors much like we do with everything else. We try to keep our grass cut. We try to do all the right things so that um, you know, they feel comfortable. So this, again, was an opportunity for us to um, have some funds for the long term, keep our club going, uh, and at the same time try to uh, be as low impact on our neighbors as possible. Thank you. Thank you. 
Anyone else wishing to speak in favor? Anyone wishing to speak in opposition? How many of you are there? Two. Just two? Okay. Come on forward. <clears throat> and if she makes all the comments that you want to make, don't bother coming forward, okay? We don't want to have repetition here. Okay. Do you swear the evidence you're about to present is the truth? Yes, I do. Name and address, please. Uh, Denise Nimanek, 2756 Caton Farm Road. I am the okay. property manager um, for the Golf U Estates property, which is We're directly south of there, yeah. Directly to the south, and uh, our company also is the property management company for Inwood Terrace, that's directly to the east. Okay. Okay. Um, Golf U Estates consists of 154 units. Inwood Terrace consists of 60 units. All these are residential folks. Um, uh, the both board of directors considers this this potential project is being unsightly um, in addition to that the the uh, membership itself are concerned that uh, having this large tower built uh, within eyesight of many many of the balconies uh, would cause a, a potential in uh, property values things like that so we're definitely not in favor of it okay thank you did you cover your points? Probably. Do you swear the evidence you're about to present us the truth? Yes. Could I have your name and address? Jackie Mass. Uh, I'm the manager of Park Tower at 247 Caterpillar Drive. Okay. Um, we're opposed to it because I think it would be unsightly. Um, we also have a roof that could be offered for this that would not require another pole or item being built that would be unsightly. So we do have that to offer for availability okay thank you anyone else any discussion by the board questions chair closes petition to the floor and has the board for discussion and a vote motion to approve second we have a motion and a second to approve the petition call the roll mr. Riggs aye Ms. Darley aye mr. Ferguson aye mr. Graham no Mr. Hennessy. Uh, I'm going to vote aye uh, for several reasons. I, I don't really see it as, uh, as a problem where it's located. Uh, and also the fact that the veterans, the legions clubs, special athletic clubs, fraternity clubs, they're all having financial problems. This would be an asset to them and their endeavors. Uh, the tower itself, uh, these are all over the place. In fact, there's one within a block of where I live. and. I very seldom even notice it doesn't cause any problems to me or any of my neighbors. Uh, I don't see any legitimate reasons to deny this petition, so I vote aye. The vote was what? Vote one. One, two. Four to one. Four, uh, vote was four to one for okay. approval. And that goes to the City Council for final deliberation because it's a variation and a special use permit. Okay, let's move on. Matthew Husinski, Petition 2015-04. Petition number 2015-04, the applicant is Matthew Husinski. Hensinski, that's good. I, I'm sorry. Hensinski. Hens Hensinski. Correct. Okay, thanks. Uh, the leasee, the owner is Scott and Shiro Petrick, location 1213 North Broadway. Uh, their request is for a special use permit to allow auto repair in an existing commercial building. The petitioner is requesting a special use permit to allow operation of an auto repair business at 1213 North Broadway Street, the southwest corner of Broadway and Smith Streets, south of Theodore Street. In Jan January 2014, the City Council denied a special use permit request to allow an auto sales lot at the site. Under site-specific information, the property is located um, on a 114-foot by 122-foot uh, lot. Uh, it is a uh, one-story cement, cement block building, uh, former auto repair shop, uh, that was built <coughs> on a slab in 1958. Uh, the building faces east on a partially paved lot. The site is zoned B3 general business. 
under surrounding zoning land use and character. Um, to the north is commercial zone B3. To the south is residential zone B3. To the east is vacant residential and commercial zone B3. And to the west is single family residential zone R2, which is our single family residential zoning. Applicable regulations are as noted. Uh, there were no comments regarding this particular request at the February 5th Community Design Review Board meeting. Under general discussion, the petitioner plans to conduct auto repair within the existing structure. The building includes an office area, work area, and bathroom. According to the petitioner, few changes are planned for the site. Staff recommends that a six foot high shadow box style fence be installed at the west property line to screen the site from the adjoining residential. <clears throat> the proposed used auto repair must be confined to the building interior. No outdoor repair of any kind is permitted. Vehicles awaiting repair shall not be stored outside uh, at the site in excess of three days. Likewise, vehicles which have been repaired shall not be stored outside uh, in, ex in excess of three days. Adequate off-street paved parking for 10 cars is available at the site. The petitioner will need to provide an approved paved surface and bumper blocks for the parking lot. On-site landscaping, as identified in a basic landscape plan, will need to be provided within 180 days of approval. If the zoning board desires to approve the special use, the following conditions uh, would be included. That the repair of vehicles be confined to the building interior. Uh, that vehicles awaiting repair shall not be stored outside in excess of three days. That vehicles which have been repaired shall not be stored outside in excess of three days. That the improved paved parking lot surface must meet minimum paving standards per the inspection division. That the site improvements conform to a submitted landscape plan to be implemented, implemented uh, within 180 days of the approval that a six foot high wood shadow box style fence be installed within 180 days of approval. Uh, we've also included the 180 day clause um, requiring that a permit or certificate of occupancy be obtained not less than 180 days of the date of approval. And finally, should the property be declared a public nuisance, it shall be subject to a rehearing and possible revocation of the special use permit. And that concludes the staff report, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Do you swear the evidence you're about to present is the truth? Yes, sir. You're going to be talking? Uh, I'm, I'm, Scott, I'm the property owner, Scott Petrick. Okay. Are you going to be I'm making just, any comments? Uh, only if you would like me to. Well, then I might as well swear you in. Okay. Do you swear the evidence you're about to present is the truth, sir? I do. Name and address? Matthew Hensinski, 16456 South Lily Cash, Plainfield. And? I'm Scott Petrick, 24429 West Woodridge Way, Shorewood, Illinois. Okay. Any comments, sir? Not yet. Nothing you'd like to say? Not at this moment, no. Any comments from the board? I was wondering how many employees you have. Uh, currently, we're, we reside in New Lenox. We have two employees. Oh. Hours of the shop? Hours of shop, Monday through Friday, is 9 to 6. Saturday, depending on the time of the year, but normally it's nine till noon. Are you okay with all the conditions? Yes. Just for the record, uh, in 214, this was denied a special use permit for a sales lot. Why, I don't remember why that was. Do you, do you call offhand? I, I believe there was some neighborhood opposition to the sales lot. To the sales lot? Yes. Or out, why, because of outside storage or what? Um, I, I'm not quite sure what was going on before on that particular lot, but I do recall uh, there being some neighborhood opposition. I remember something about it, but I can't remember yeah. what it was. Okay. Um, anybody in the audience wishing to speak in favor? Is there anyone opposed? Apparently they're not opposed to this one. Chair closes the petition to the floor and asks the board for discussion and a vote. I move for approval. Second. We have a motion to second to approve the petition. Call the roll, please. Ms. Darling? Aye. Mr. Ferguson? Aye. 
Mr. Graham. Aye. Mr. Riggs. Aye. Mr. Hennessy. Aye. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Petition 2015-05, uh, Thomas Gianni. Petition number 2015-05, the applicant is Thomas Gianni, uh, the uh, signed contractor, and Pam Sullins, the property manager. The owner of the property is Inland Commercial Property Management. Location 2601 Plainfield Road. Uh, their request is for a variation on signage. The petitioner is requesting a variation on the maximum allowed height <coughs> for a proposed Dick's Sporting Goods store uh, wall sign from 25 feet to 34 to 34 feet 3 inches. The 13-acre subject site comprises comprises two lots. Uh, and that's lot three and lot 10 within the U.S. Route 30 slash Kellogg Street subdivision, which currently contains the Cinemark Movies 10 building, and I believe that was recently closed, um, in the Barnes & Noble Party City building. The newly proposed Dick Sporting Goods and DSW Shoes building uh, is proposed uh, for a spring 2015 construction start. Um, the Cinemark Movies 10 building will be demolished Existing zoning, zoning on the site is B3 general business. Surrounding zoning land use and character is as noted. Applicable regulations are as noted. Uh, there were no comments regarding this particular request at the Community Design Review Board meeting, which uh, was held on February 5th. Under general discussion, in order for the new Dick Sporting Goods store to locate their national signature signage within the entry structure of their new building, a variation on sign height from 25 feet high to 34 feet 3 inches has been requested by the petitioner. In the traditional stacked letter configuration, uh, the letters in, uh, that spell out dicks will be at 31 feet 8 inches. And the top of the ball on the uh, apostrophe will finish at 34 feet 3 inches. The architecture of the proposed building di dictates the placement of the signage in this location and it will not protrude over the parapet roof line. Uh, the proposed sign square footage will total 190 square feet. And that concludes the staff report, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. This is where the evidence you're about to present is the truth? Yes. Could I have your names and addresses? My name is Tom Gianni, 677. Dunks Ferry Road, Ben Salem, Pennsylvania. My name is Pam Sullins, 2905 Butterfield Road in Oak Brook, Illinois. Thank you. Uh, when are they going to start turning that down? There's something in the paper today about it, actually. We're actually um, in for a permit, so and we have to wait a 10-day environmental thing. And so once that's up, the I know they've already have a wrecking bond on file with the city, and so. So Probably you, first of March. And you need these, the sign permit before you can put up the building, huh? Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Any comments you'd like to make? Uh, just generally, just to familiarize yourself with Dick's Sporting Goods, this will be a approximately a 50,000 square foot retail space. The <coughs> only identification on the front of the building are the letters or the words Dick's Sporting Goods. The way the building is constructed, there is a uh, fascia structure, an architectural structure that, that, that you see here, and the Dix letters fit or pocket into that structure, and the sporting good letters pocket into the lower portion of the structure. And trying to, to manipulate those letters in such a way as to make them 25 foot tall is, is going to totally disrupt the national identification national signature of Dick's Sporting Goods. We think that the, the letters present themselves well on that wall, that they, they'll identify themselves well to the, to the approaching public. And the overall concept of the entire shopping area here will, will add to the, uh, to the traffic flow in the, uh, in the shopping center and hopefully will benefit 
more than just, you know, Dick Sporting Goods and DSW. Um, Dick Sporting Goods will probably add something close to 50 to 70 jobs, new jobs to the, uh, to the area. And they make a long-term commitment to the communities that they're in. And uh, we believe that Dick's, it's imperative that Dick's have or be allowed to have that letter height because it will identify them properly. It matches their national signature that you see advertised on television. So sort of like so McDonald's on. arches, huh? <laughs> McDonald's arches are actually supposed to be French. I think fry. they didn't allow that in Frankfurt or someplace. They wouldn't because of the historical value of the town or something. See, so you, good thing you're not in a historical district yeah. out there. Well, it is a it is a shopping center, a shopping district. That's, you know, it's designed for we're people to, no, we're to go and shop. Any comments you'd like to make, ma'am? If there's any questions of the owner, that's I'm here from England. So. Any comments from the board? You got your answer on employees, so. <laughs> yep. Any other comments? There's no one in the audience to object, and no one, unless, sir, do you have any comments? Any comments of any kind? Okay. I was in favor. Ah, okay. There you go. Come on up, say something. <laughs> <laughs> Petition is going to be closed to the floor. I ask for a motion. <clears throat> motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the petition. Call the roll, please. Mr. Ferguson? Aye. Mr. Graham? Aye. Mr. Riggs? Aye. Ms. Darley? Aye. Mr. Hennessy? Aye. Thank you all. Good luck. You're welcome. Appreciate your help. Thank you much. All those in favor of approving the minutes of the last meeting, signify by saying aye. 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 All those in favor of adjournment, signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you.